super professional. Okay, we're good to go. Cool. Welcome to the Paradise Paradox. My name's Kurt Robinson. And my name's Aaron Battle. And we're out here in this forest they call Colomos, which sounds like colonoscopy. We seem pretty abandoned. Like there's no one here, so. Yeah, it's Saturday and there's like nothing, nothing but us and the birds and that guy behind us jogging. So. We got good seats. Uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet. Front, front row seats to the freak show. And uh, Aaron, what are we talking about today? Today, I'm going, today's episode is going to be a special, done by special request. I wanted to cover <laughs> frequencies because I tried a couple times to, to write about frequencies and I thought it just, there's so much involved in that. I really need a second party to help me navigate. So when you say frequencies here, you're talking about something like a spiritual frequency. Uh, or mental frequency, emotional frequency. You're not talking about like electromagnetic radiation or something. You're talking about something very different and perhaps metaphysical or um, and energetic, some energy which hasn't yet been discovered or entirely understood by science. Yeah. 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 Metaphysical, because it could be, it could be some kind of electromagnetic energy of some kind that can be measured at some point but our technology is not there yet okay um so we'll stick with we'll stay with the metaphysical realm mm -hmm. and more so how that affects your ability to perceive the um the collective matrix that we seem to generate in our reality all right let's get started human beings okay the human being is like you know the one of the most advanced animals on this planet we yep. just we just happen to Coming have off. well that yeah <laughs> within, within this frequency <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah like it, it, the human being is an advanced animal mm. and we chose to let uh we chose this instrument mm. to be our um our physical representation like our our instrument our vehicle mm. so if we take a step back and say that we're not the human being then a lot of people would then ask them what are we yeah it's a natural question so if we are like a soul or a spirit or everyone has their their essence mm. where that exists and what that is i can't tell you but that's probably the best description i think people are people commonly use Okay. Like okay. On like another spiritual plane, I've heard that we are one person is the all. The one is the all. We are mm. all that is, and yep. maybe that maybe that's the case. I'm not too sure. Uh, yep. I'm not too sure how much truth is to that. But assuming that we have to accept that we are one, um, and that everything that we can see hear, touch, mm. is our own manifestation of our perceived reality. Mm. So in that case, I guess we are one with everything because for us to know that there's something there, we need to then manifest it in our mind or interpret it through the, some kind of electronic signals through our own five senses. Okay, okay. <laughs> so we're trying to make sense of this multi-dimensional infinite universe uh, just by lim limiting it down to five senses. An idea which I've heard, um, I think I read this in Robert Anton Wilson, but I'm not sure where it originated. But the, um, his idea was that God created the universe so it could look at itself. So God be being completely infinite and unfathomable and eternal um, it was just completely perfect it's almost like a state of nothingness or complete integrity complete wholeness 
and um, by splitting itself into tiny pieces of consciousness, it can it can view itself. It can like play this game, enter the uh, well, not enter the void, come out of the void, and ex experience something which we we would call creation, but it's it's actually just this splinter, a splinter of reality, a splinter of eternity. Okay. Then I would say that the, the little bit or the big bit of God that you are yeah. chose for you to experience this as you. Like you chose the Kurt Robin experience. Who's Kurt Robin? Uh, Kurt Robinson. <laughs> yeah. You chose the experience. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's another idea, uh, which I, I believe comes from the whole, that book, The Holographic Universe, where he says we're all these kind of angels outside of time, and then we choose each path line. Like we can, we can see the entire life, uh, our entire lifeline spread out before us, and we say, "Yep, I'll, I'll give that one a go." That looks like a laugh. And yeah, I like the, that idea. Yeah. <laughs> It's a fun idea. Okay, so, I mean, then, then I've got to assume that parts of God chose that they didn't want the human experience. Sure. And they might want the, the tree experience or the, yeah. the dog experience, dolphin mm. experience. And each experience should be equal value to every other experience. Mm. But the, the fun part of being a human being is that we assume that there's so much more to experience. Mm. Because every other experience, from our point of view, our perspective, seems to be a little bit dull. Like, well, like if, we, if we look at a tree and think, oh, I wouldn't like to be a tree. I don't envy you, buddy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and he's all like sitting over there saying the same thing about us. <laughs> well, a, a tree, uh, I'm going to explore this a little bit because it fascinates me. All right. But a tree doesn't have eyes or a mouth or ears as, you know, as, as conventional as these things we have as a human, like a, as a human experience, but they still have these, um, I mean, a tree would still have senses of some kind. Like, yeah, well, it can sense light. Exactly. It can sense water, I, I suppose. So it has some idea of what's up and what's down. Yeah, <laughs> that seems pretty cool. Yeah. Like, you know, now we're talking, there's at least three variables <laughs> there. Yeah. But um, if a tree can't exactly see, or they can't see the environment around us, it's like, I've, I've heard, and I'm not sure what it's called, but where people that are blind, they seem to have their hearing like heightens a little bit. Yeah. Or becomes more sensitive. Yeah. Can you imagine how sensitive a tree would be to light? Hmm. Well, you're saying it doesn't have eyes, but actually, I mean, if we look at these trees, they have thousands of, or at least hundreds of leaves. So each one is is reacting to light at some level. So is it actually that, like we have sense, some sensitivity to light through our eyes, but is a tree actually in some ways more sensitive? Does it have more sensation, more sense ability in its, in its leaves? Yeah, and then, and then, to what level of consciousness would a tree have to be able to interpret those senses? <laughs> like maybe their sight is so much better than ours, <laughs> and they can see us for what we really are. <laughs> yeah, but it, it like that that experience of of a tree from a, the seed pushing for light to bust through the ground, mm. and then to grow for I'm gonna throw out a hundred years mm. before it's chopped down. <laughs> But like, let's say hundreds of years of just seeking the light. Every day is like another race to grow as much as you can. Right. But my, my point is like the perception of, of, these, of these, uh, this environment. As a human being, we have other variables and interactive co-creators that are putting together this, this big reality matrix. Um, and that's why I like to focus a lot on feelings I think, I think I, I often jump to, you know, it's better to have a good vibe or a good feeling about something. And the question you asked me was, 
why do you why do you always want to feel good about something? Uh, as, that's as, a, uh, wait, that's not exactly what I said. Okay. <laughs> Let's put, put this into context. Please. You, you were talking about switching between realities and you said that that maybe changing realities is as simple or, or perhaps not as simple, but as uh, analogous to uh, changing channels on a TV. You just switch into a different frequency, just to turn the knob and, and then you're picking up this other reality. Uh, but then you, you said something about positive emotions and how positive emotions would, would open you up into changing realities easier. And I asked, why do you always make that leap of assuming positive emotions will make it easier for you to switch realities? Which I, I think I think you might be onto something, but I want to want to I want you to justify it mm. if you can. <laughs> no, no, it definitely needs elaboration. <laughs> yeah. What I what I mean is, let's say you walk into a room of ten people, mm. and you're bringing in a an upset emotion into the room. Yeah. That's going to affect everyone in that room. Mm. That's going to make them feel somewhat well. People that are more susceptible, yeah, or empathetic. I, I, mm. They might hear you out and say, uh, you know, there's really no reason to be so upset about that. Mm. These things happen, you know, you probably should just move on and just left it outside the room. Mm. At this point, now you have a couple people, maybe half the room, that also feel uncomfortable or bad mm. as well. Mm. So I think in that case, if you're coming into a room and you've got a, a, a positive emotion, then you're not going to put other people off and they're probably going to try, they're probably going to give you a little more positivity as well, yeah. Which is gonna, I guess, allow the the um, the manifestation of that room experience to be be more malleable. And then at that yeah. point, you can choose what you want to what what you want to experience. Because if okay. someone was to throw back a negative emotion in response to, like, yeah, react negatively in response yeah. to you being negative and making them feel negative, mm. then you're really creating extra work for yourself. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think that's reasonable. I think you got a fair point there. Yeah. But um, it's it's like when you're walking through the park. If you're already upset, you're going to notice things that might keep you feeling upset, <laughs> or uh, you know, as opposed to here you are feeling good and you're in a cheerful mood, possibly in love, and all of a sudden you realize, man, I never realized how green all these trees are and how wonderful <laughs> that is. They they really are. <laughs> some red, some yellow, some purple over there. <laughs> and I think you appreciate things more. Yep. And that, that appreciation leads to gratitude and the gratitude leads to more fuel or more power or just uplifting. And then again, the whole experience becomes more malleable mm. and then you can choose what you want to. It's like, you know, you're, not, you're not creating extra work for yourself. You're not... Mm. You're not making it more difficult by yeah, trying oh, to oh, okay. avoid. That's, yeah, that's a, that's an interesting way you put it. Not making more work for yourself. Like if you're getting bogged down with negative emotions, you have you're like in this continuous struggle. But if you free yourself up from those negative emotions, you don't have to uh, exhaust yourself because it is exhausting feeling negative emotions all the time. It's a, it's a drain. <laughs> um, a few friends often ask me, what do I do to try and stay, to try and stay positive? Because mm. I tell you, I'm not positive all the time. Mm. Like yesterday was pretty, the lowest day that I've had all year. Mm. Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't because I chose it to be, but then maybe, maybe I did. Yeah. It was like, just because a few things don't go my way, all of a sudden I want to, uh, I want to throw a tantrum. Mm. Even though it's, I don't think I've thrown a tantrum for many years, <laughs> I kind of wanted to experience it. <laughs> the thing is, you know, I don't want to have to repair kicking a hole through the door or I don't want to have to be dragged out of, the, out of a, um, a shopping center because I'm knocking, you know, I'm knocking merchandise over or wherever, you know, whatever. Come um, on, Royds, settle down. Yeah, it's like, I don't want to be the angry guy. Uh, I, did, I watched The Hulk the other night as well. It was, on, it was on TV, and it's like it was cool. There was a scene in there where they're teaching him how to meditate and how to breathe and control his. For real. Yeah, it was it was cool. It was like it was the one with um, Edward Norton. All right. And uh, he's there, and he's he's in Brazil, and he's got a um, 
a guru in front of him, teaching him how to do like the fire breath, yoga, breathing. Uh-huh. And it's all about trying to keep the heart beat down so it doesn't turn green and start bashing everything up. <laughs> and it was cool because, you know, we don't need to be the Hulk to take advantage of such tools. Like, mm. you know, we could, we could do that, you know, whenever we're in, in traffic or whenever we stump our, our toe or whenever we fall off the swing. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess that's kind of the, the basis for um, for understanding how to to create the most out of or you know changing channels. So like firstly, you need to know that you know it's easier to be in a positive channel, yeah, than a so, negative channel. So you're saying frequency. I mean, when you when you say frequency, you use it in in a lot of ways. Mm. I think you use it in a way when you talk about emotions like tune into a different emotional frequency, tune, tune into a higher frequency, a more positive frequency, or you also use it to talk about, uh, let's see, I think when, one time we had a conversation about saying there's, a, there's like this vast spectrum of possible personalities and sometimes hanging out with new people can open up your own personal spectrum so you you know how these new people act and and uh, if you get to know them well enough that becomes part of you and that becomes like not necessarily joking like binding a style or something but uh, but knowing their styles of humor and their their, their mannerisms in, in which yeah you can make them a part of yourself yeah, it's an interesting point. Um, I've heard, for example, uh, Tim Ferriss talk about it. Joe Rogan's mentioned it. A few other, a few other dudes talk about the top five friends that you're the most people, you, the five people you hang out with the most. Yeah. You somewhat become these people. Yeah, you become the average of your best five friends or the five people you hang out with the most. Definitely truth yeah. to that. Or some others. I think. This was from an Amway meeting, I heard someone say, you, you become the people who you hang out with and the books you read, which I, I think is valid as well. Yeah, books. but yeah. it's interesting that on the other hand, I know of people that yeah. just don't talk to friends, you know, without any explanation, mm-hmm. it's just uh, I'm cutting you off and I'm gonna go pay the, you know, $20,000 a year country club membership to go hang out with guys that are, are winners. Okay. Okay, well, if that's what they have to do. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it, it's interesting that I think people are aware of this and yep. then there's, there's like certain products for these people that, that are willing to buy it straight away or don't understand the, the value in having a good, diverse range of friends. Ah, uh, okay, okay. But, yeah, I mean, you want to have diverse friends, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to have negative friends. Because uh, uh, when you said that, I interpreted it as something like, Will Smith, like Will Smith once, quote, once quoted as saying his secret to success was getting rid of all of his loser friends, uh, which sounds really harsh, but the, the cold fact of it, the cold hard truth is that uh, friendships are give and take, and, and if there's too much take, uh, too much emotional draining or, or too much, you know, material take, then that's, you know, that should be the end of the friendship because it's not, it's not a mutually beneficial arrangement. Well, that, that yeah. shows a level of, of emotional intelligence yeah. to be able to measure that this person is costing me energy. Yeah. I'm, going, I'm going to do the smart thing and just start taking small incremental steps uh, that way now, mm. away yeah. from this person. Yeah, it's a, it takes a lot of courage, I think, because it's easy to stay where you're comfortable and you might be comfortable in a place where you're whinging all the time or something like that. But it takes, it, it takes a real desire to change your life to say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna be something else. I've been there. Hmm. I, I've been in those positions where it's, it's, it's enjoyable to have a coffee in the lunchroom and whinge about the workplace you're in and, yeah. and, and, and who, you know, who you don't like and, and all that kind of thing but i can confidently say now that i don't have any loser friends <laughs> i uh, i slowly walked away from all that <laughs> yeah 
Good. So uh, another example uh, of how, how you can lift your, your emotional frequency or, or just pull yourself out of feeling down about something mm. might be to, to start creating a list of everything that you should be grateful for. Mm. Like I, I've, I've advised many friends, you know, just, and you know, they, they write, start writing down things that they're grateful for. And you know, it, it feels silly. Like it, it feels dumb almost like, you know, I'm, I'm happy mum and dad are well. And you know, like my brothers and sisters are all, you know, they're developing and doing their thing <laughs> and that's nice. And uh, you know, it was, it was nice to, um, to get a day off and go out and enjoy the sun. I don't, I don't know, like, you know, whatever you did that day, <laughs> whatever, whatever you did that day that you really enjoyed, just start writing all this stuff down. Yeah. And it's almost like a kind of meditation because, yeah, yeah. Uh, have you tried that exercise? Well, I've been doing it uh, the past couple of days. Uh, I, I sent you that link. Uh, did you, do you watch that video on London Real, the guy, uh, his name is Icon? Uh, so he, he's got this idea, he's got an app and uh, a book that he sells. It's called the five minute journal. So the five minute journal will wake, wake you up in the morning or as soon as you wake up, you grab your phone or you grab the journal and you open it up and it says, uh, so what are the three things you're grateful for? Um, what, what can make today great? And what's your daily affirmation? And then when you go to bed, you write down three amazing things which happened today and how you can make today better. And uh, I've been practicing this the, the, the past few days. And uh, actually the first, day, the first morning I did it, uh, I, I grabbed my notepad and scribbled something down and, and I was like, yeah, I jumped out of bed and, and uh, started doing some exercise, which I hadn't done for a couple of weeks. So, <laughs> Great. so it's a good kind of motivator. I mean, it's not like that, that uh, instant burst of motivation isn't always going to be there. Of course, sometimes it takes willpower. Uh, it, it takes mental, mental strength, mental fortitude. Just to, just to power through, um, but uh, I I do think it's a good exercise. I think it's valuable, and I think um, like this is something. Of course, a lot of people have seen the secret, and they know that story about the the gratitude stone, where the guy picks up the gratitude stone, and he, he uh, it's it's kind of hokey, and it's it's kind of uh, woo woo. Um, like I, I think that that movie um, is a watered down version of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, in which he, t he talks about the Carnegie secret. Uh, and uh, the, yeah, the Carnegie secret is more or less that you visualize things and then you can make it a reality. But then the book also goes into detail about the brutal self-analysis that you have to do <laughs> to, to make these things happen. Like it's not enough just to, to wish about things and, and be grateful. But on the other hand, it sure as fuck does help. To <laughs> makes things a lot easier when when you're grateful for what you already have, rather than um, yeah, the the alternative. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. you need to have a switched on creative a creative ability to uh, to sometimes find the solutions to get out of just the the grind that you might be in, mm. or, or at least even to. I mean, if you try and sit down and write down what you're grateful for and you're in a dark place, mm. you're going to be there just tapping the paper for a minute before you're like, you know, I really hate everything. <laughs> I really hate my life. <laughs> I really hate everything. Gee, I, I got a little wow. enjoyment out of saying that because I didn't think I've, I've, I felt that for, <laughs> for a very long time. Um, and it just seems funny to me. But I, I know that if you're in that situation, yeah. which we all have been because we all go through these these ups and downs of life, it's not very fun in that, in that moment. Mm. But you really need to detach yourself from this human body mm. and they're critiquing that you might be getting at all levels, whether it's for, from your physical appearance or just because you have you know, certain likes or preferences or whatever. It's like that, that isn't, that's not you exactly. That's just your, like, your school report card of what you've been carrying through life physically. As soon as you start developing your, your ability to creatively be grateful 
for something that you might have that you might be able to change in the short term, you'd be surprised at how quick that starts to change when you can present or develop another image for yourself. Like you need to create that, that dream before you can start moving towards it. Um, but Napoleon, Napoleon Hill, what he does is he, he lets you enjoy the dream, but then he busts your ass and tells you these are the rules of the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you want to work, you want to make money, you want it to be successful, you better get up on time <laughs> and you better get out there. Yeah. But then he also, he, he allows you to formulate the steps to start mm. moving as well as critiquing where you are. Like as soon as you find out where the spot you're at, then you can start moving. Which is again the Paradise Paradox. Watch us on YouTube, like us on Facebook. Watch us on YouTube, like us on Facebook. Tweet us on Twitter and listen to us on iTunes or Pocket Casts. To continue with talking frequencies, just to recap, we we spoke about emotional frequency, mm. and that's kind of just riding through how you're feeling day to day, through the moments. Stemming from that, that leads you to, um, I've heard it referred to as like a, an emotional bank account, okay. which is like the basis of, of your, your personality frequency. So. It's like if you, if you constantly want to feel the victim, like feel like you are the victim in, in a case and you know, feel like the whole world's crushing me and I can't win, <laughs> then you, know, you adopt, you get caught because you keep getting chipped away and you keep sinking mm. into this like, I'm gonna say lower frequency, but I don't like saying lower or right. high, higher it's frequency. Just, it, it, like it is what it is, right? Yeah. It's just another shade of life. But, but you start to adopt the, these negative hits as in, that's just me. I'm just unlucky. Nothing works out for little old Aaron. <laughs> Whole world just picks on me. And then all of a sudden, I become someone that's going to whinge about nearly pretty much everything because that's my, my reaction. Yeah. It's like, I just, I just feel sad about everything. Like nothing... I don't even want to try anymore because I can't, I can't get out of it. I can't win or it's just, you know, that's just my bad luck. And nobody wants to hang out with that guy. Yeah. So I had to move to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure. I, I remember I said to one of my Harry Krishna friends once, I'm like, oh, I'm, get, I'm going to get a new job because uh, I'm, I'm looking for a change. And, and, and he was like, ah. Oh. So you're looking for the temporary happiness that comes from change, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, uh, yeah, is that bad? <laughs> He's like, well, it's not bad. It's just, it's only temporary. So. <laughs> but sometimes you need to make these moves to, to kickstart. Like, you know, sometimes, yeah. you know, you can't go from having two sugars in your coffee to having no sugar in your coffee. Why not? Well, I mean, you can, but it's just, it's not very comfortable. Like sometimes you should, you know, reward right. yourself with, I'm going to have one and a half spoons for a month. Okay. And then I'm going to have do, one spoon. Do what's practical. Okay. Yeah. I think you need to understand that, you know, where we are in, you know, we are in time. So you can't, we can't time travel just yet. We can't jump. So, you know, take your time with these changes. Otherwise you're going to, you're going to fall over or crash. Hmm. And this is important because when, you're, when you understand your personality, when you're able to step out of your own self and assess or critically assess your personality and go, you know what, I don't want to live the rest of my life like this. I, I deserve better. And decide I'm going to slowly start doing things for me, not in a selfish way, but in a way that's going to give you that, that short-term sort of little thrill of change, uh, that, that little short-term happiness to, uh, to start moving yourself in, in a different direction. You know, that isn't self-sabotaging. Mm. Mm. And I guess the reason why I'm putting so much focus on it is because your personality 
or your frequency of that is going to do, is that's the cause of your emotional frequency, which is going to either make it easy for you to manifest your reality or not. It's like once you get good momentum of being in a good mood and being able to manage a good mood all the time, then you're going to perceive the world in a much happier, nicer way where you're able to present yourself in a more content, confident way that's going to allow you to achieve what you want or what you, we aim to gain faster. Mm. And then you can really start you know, living your life to a, to a maximum or at least moving yourself towards that. But uh, that, always, that doesn't always happen. Like, uh, like yesterday, for example, I was saying that I was, I was, in, a, I was in a pretty shitty mood. Like okay. straight up, pretty the worst mood that I've been in, I can honestly say five years. <laughs> like, you know, you know pretty, pretty the worst mood I've, I've been in that I can remember. And it was all about booking some flights and just bullshit with, <laughs> uh, like, just with accounts and the, the, the online website, the system, my internet keeps dropping out. It's like the whole world was coming in on me yesterday. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was, I was at the point of, Oh, I wanted, I wanted to destroy things. Like, I'm in my house and I'm like, I'm going to knock something over. You know, just that cheap thrill. Uh, I'm going to kick this door. And I was like, no, you're not. You're not going to do none of that dumb shit. You're going to breathe. It's like step one. So I'm there and, and I did those, like, you know, the arms and I'm, I'm breathing and it's like... <sighs> okay. With the yoga move. What do you call it? Um, well, you know, like the basic sun salutations. Right. Like okay. Super basic yoga. Jump on YouTube. Check them out. Um, but I couldn't break I couldn't break the bad mood mm. and I thought well you know what like I'm trying to be positive I'm trying and it's not working so you know what I'm going to I'm going to watch this experience out I'm not going to try and I'm not going to commit to anything today so you know I was hanging with with Joanna my wife and it's like you know what you order for me you choose where we're going to go eat you choose like this afternoon's activity and uh, <laughs> that didn't help either <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't want to commit to anything because I knew that I was if, if I was to do something then I'm, I'm doing it from a negative emotional frequency right. so uh, I was like you know how about how about Joanna surprise me <laughs> you order for me and uh, we'll do what you want to do this afternoon so uh, believe it or not we went and had sushi it was great <laughs> then we went uh, then we went to Fabricas de Francia which is like the department store we uh, we went and we got to try on makeup and moisturizing creams for <laughs> hours. <laughs> and, and I thought, okay, so and I, there goes the monthly budget. Yeah, oh, forget, forget the budget. There's no budgets. Um, <laughs> Not anymore. <though. laughs> it's uh, anyway, no, yeah, it was it, it was cool. We, we stayed within within our budget. Yeah. But yeah. Um, <laughs> the funny thing was, the whole time I'm like, you know what? This is what happens when because I mean I'm playing the game here. Uh -huh. Like, you know, I knew I was in a bad mood, so I didn't, I didn't want to manifest anything worse. Hmm. So I gave away my control instead of just absorbing the bad mood and just accepting it. I was like, you know what, Joanna, have free reign. That tested me to the limit. <laughs> okay. Like, so it didn't, it didn't actually achieve what you wanted it to. No, no it, it didn't. It didn't. It, it backfired on me. Uh, okay. um, but I, I guess, you know, I guess... Happy wife, happy life, right? <laughs> That's what dad taught me. <laughs> so that that was cool. I, I just I just flowed with it. Um, and then at the very end, it's like uh, I've been I've been looking for a, like a razor or you know a shaver lately. Yep. And um, I quite like my my new look with moustache and all. And I thought, you know, I'll go and have a look. You know, hey, el guapo. I like mis bigotes. <laughs> I thought I, I don't. You know, I've had enough of this makeup shit so I'm, I'm gonna go to the guy section for a bit and just wander around yeah um and then i was looking at the the razors and there's like a thousand so many different types the guys i mean the people there are trying to sell me things and you know and i was like you know what i'm gonna you know you guys work here so i'm gonna ask you the questions i want <laughs> so I, I pull out like four of them I'm like which one's better what's got battery life how the how are they connected like i'm trying to utilize i'm trying to be positive about uh -huh. being in a bad situation and they, they send me upstairs and I find a clearance rack of just like, just cooking and coffee stuff. So I'm like, you know Sorry. what, I'll, I'll have a look at this. And I found, I found this, um, later I realized it was a cookie jar 
but it was a really sweet cookie jar, like his round head and the lid. Take a photo. Yeah, I, I put it up. Um, the lid was like a little beret. It's like all glass porcelain or something. The lid's a beret and the jar's like a head and all it's got is black sunnies and a, and a mustache. It was really cool. And, uh, you know, and I look at it and it's like 500 and something pesos. I'm like, no way am I paying like 50 bucks for this cookie jar, which I was going to put coffee in it. But, and then, and then I say, yeah, look, it's got a little red tag on it. Uh, it was 10 pesos. Um, <laughs> no, it was, it was something like, it was something like 50 pesos. All right. Yeah. That's a good deal. So I was like, this is a real, it's a good deal. Like this is. It's like, thank you. My, my whole day of just pain <laughs> has been rewarded with this moustache cookie jar and black lid beret. It was really cool. And, uh, and as I'm paying for it, the, uh, the staff drop it. Just smash it. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess we won't be putting a photo up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they. It's, it's like I, I didn't even see it happen. You know, here I am. Incredible. I'm all. I'm all happy. You know, like a little kid. I'm. Mum's buying me something. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's, it's exciting. I'm getting something from Kmart, and um, they smashed my my new coffee jar. <laughs> I've never even heard of that happening. You know, <laughs> so that was my that was my yesterday. <laughs> right. Not to mention, I still don't have God internet. God shat on me. It was like it was like God's hammer. Mm. Boom. There, like, there you God go. Did this, man. I was like, up, down, up, smash. <laughs> um, and then I, I just gave up. I was like, you know what? I, I don't even care anymore. I didn't care. Like, you know, don't give me nothing. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm going home. They, I mean, it, it all got resolved. The guys rang up another another fabricers, and they're gonna they're gonna send one over. So I get to pick it up in a couple of days. All right. So I'll be, we get to put the, we'll put a photo up. <laughs> uh, but that that's my point like sometimes I mean that's my little story but sometimes you can't control your your emotional frequency but yesterday I can't explain why I was all over the shop like I could manifest anything for myself and when mm. I tried to do good in a bad situation it went worse mm. and then when I thought I was rewarded I wasn't it was like it was worse again um, so I understand it's hard <laughs> it's hard to break out of these out of these ruts because you, you sometimes you can't and even if you are uh, completely step out of your own self and critically you know objectively say Aaron where are you why do you feel shit what just happened how can we fix this you know without sounding like a psychopath but, <laughs> but you're trying to coach yourself through you know a, a shit situation and um <laughs> Yeah, try, try, trying to switch on God mode, like I got this, um, and you can't. It's like you, you are, you're trapped. Firstly, you're trapped inside the body. Mm. Then you're trapped inside time. Then you're trapped inside your emotional personality. So trying to manifest and perceive your reality positively is like pushing shit uphill sometimes. You haven't mm. got a chance. But sometimes you need to just to realize that and just go with the flow. And look for those little cheap, you know, cheap happinesses. <laughs> okay, so frequencies, <laughs> frequencies. I guess that's probably the most, um, the most common example that I use of frequency. Or yeah. like I talk about, Anger. I talk Anger about frequency. your. Uh, well, yeah, it's it's as valid as happiness. It just yeah, just don't do dumb things. It's like being it's like being drunk. That's cool. Be drunk if you want. But just don't do dumb things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's like you know. So sometimes you need to go out and enjoy a couple of drinks on a Friday afternoon. Sometimes you are upset about something, um, and you're entitled to tell the world if you feel like it. Just mm. don't expect them to be happy about hearing it. <laughs> so it's like you know that that whole give and take. <laughs> um, yeah, like I said, that's the most common way I use frequencies. But um, emotion, emotional frequencies but i guess the other side is more um material frequency and this okay. is this is going on to the human being being the instrument and you be in the spirit and you choosing to to manifest or switch into you know the reality and a common example is like you choosing to be sick and yep. i mean we've all done it 
as kids trying not to go to school. Like, I'm going to milk this. I think this. I did it for an entire year. I had no friends at school, and every morning I would wake up and say, Mom, have me or see you. Yeah. That place sucks. Don't, don't send your kids to public school. <laughs> Fucking prison. <laughs> Someone mocking me over here. <laughs> no, I'm sure he's telling good jokes. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, man, school. School's a hard gig. Yeah. Anyway. So, <laughs> so yeah, so Eckhart Tolle has something interesting about that where he, he says, like, some some people will uh, they'll be sick and um, they're, they're experiencing these physical symptoms and they have these sense perceptions, but they associate the meaning to it. They're, they're like... Uh, it's not just that they have an ache in their belly or a, or a headache or something. Uh, they're actually saying to myself, I have this particular disease, uh, like kidney failure or a migraine or that, you know. Um, they, they identify with the disease. The, the disease gives them an identity, which is a dangerous place to be in. Because even if you would have the opportunity to just drop that disease to uh, to stop being afflicted by it then uh, it makes it very difficult for you because then not um, yeah I mean you get rid of the disease and that's a relief but then you have no identity so perhaps you will actually resist giving up that disease uh, on the other hand uh, the other side of it is you know perhaps um, by identifying it I mean maybe it's not going to make you better any quicker which i personally i think i think it would um but uh for some people they wouldn't accept that and that's fine um but it's still valid it's still valuable um to to see the world in that way to not identify with your disease because that's going to lead you into this permanent state of disharmony or permanent state of discontent yeah, that's, that's really, that's really a heavy concept to, to say, you know, we all catch the cold every now and then, like, you know, mm. we're feeling, we're feeling sick and, you know, you could take, you could take a day off work, mm. but that whole day that, that you're at home, you could, you could be saying, oh, I'm taking a day off work, so I take a day of rest to get better. Yeah, yeah. But then a different mind might say, oh, how many days can I get off work? <laughs> like, how sick am I really? And then, uh, you know, they might take they might take a day off to go out and you know catch up and, and do whatever they whatever they need a day off to do. But the whole day they're thinking, I'm sick. Mm. It's my sick day, and I'm probably going to be sick for three days, <laughs> two days, and then the next day they realise they're more sick than what they were the day they had off to get where they could have got better they're actually really sick <laughs> and it's like that I feel like that's when you when you invite when you invite something like that or you uh, yeah, you invite sickness into your life it's like I feel like come it, right in sit right down welcome <laughs> it's like uh, there's a few cosmetic cosmetic um, illnesses like skin skin rashes and things like that that you know hmm. are, are recurring things and then you hear stories where like you know, it happened a couple times and then it just went away. Yeah. You heard of these stories? What, like eczema or rash or something? Uh, know. There, there's I also know. like uh, <laughs> skin, skin pigment. You know, uh, I saw a guy on the bus only yesterday. He was like, his arm was like, he's a tanned guy. Like, yeah. he's like, he was, he was tanned, like darker than myself. And his arm was just white. Like yeah. albino white from the elbow down. Yeah, and you had a. It's few... called vit, vit, vitriol, vit, vitigotti, or so. it's got some name that sounds vaguely Italian. I, I forget the name of the condition, I've... but yeah, it's like where the pigmentation is different in different sections of your body or different, um, yeah, different parts. I, uh, I, I've got one friend in particular that mm. that suffered from that um, during like early high school, and you know I. I didn't realize that it was such a heavily weighed, emotionally draining thing. Really? Why? Because people stare at him or, or it's actually got some other symptoms as well? 
No, it was just uh, just the just the bullying and yeah. like you know the 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 critical you know like you know you got you got like white patches on you. You're funny looking. You're <laughs> different. We're gonna pick on you. Wow. Like back to this school idea. <laughs> um, and and you know I, I at, at school it was just like uh, for me it was like you know that's just whatever like you know that's that's them. But you know later you know we became closer friends outside school. And, you know, certain comments were like, you know, you wouldn't believe how bad I felt in those, in those years. Mm. And I didn't even notice as a friend that, so where did it go? What happened to that? And, I, you know, it was, I was, she actually told me that it just went away. Hmm. It, was like, um, it was like when you're sick and you, you're sick for a couple of days and you're still going to work and it's like, it's going to go away, it's going away. And then that day you wake up and you're not sick, you forget that you're even sick. Like it's like, oh, I'm running late to work and you worry about other things. Mm. It was something like that. It was like, it just went right. away. It's like, I, don't, I couldn't even tell you the day that I never had my, you know, my, my white patches. Wow, cool. So <laughs> I, I, I like to think that is somewhat like a shift in a, you know, materialistic, like a, this mm. shift in reality. Yeah, frequency shift in a physical reality yeah. so you know sometimes i use the word frequency to talk about shift in realities and that's the frequency you're tuned into is and this is the reality you're tuned into um but that, that's that's fascinating isn't it <laughs> yeah it's like she forgot she was even supposed to have it and yeah away it went so like just choose not to just choose that cancer away <laughs> didn't happen we cop a lot of flag for that, you know. <laughs> People are going to jump on this video and be like, oh, you're shaming cancer survivors or something like that. Well, okay, all right. <laughs> let, let me, uh, let me, I'm not going to retract that. No, that's fine. I'm not going to retract that at all. Because just, uh, just warning, because some people, some people will well misinterpret it. <laughs> well, I mean, that's just because they're in a negative frequency. <laughs> Looking at you. <laughs> Uh, yeah. it's, it's like part of me, part of me doesn't, doesn't really um, concern myself with that because, sure, sure. because I'm, I'm right now, I'm going to choose that, um, that no one takes it the wrong way. It's like, I'm talking about extreme cases, like, you know, like very few people have this, mm. have this power, but um, what I'm pretty more concerned is that I'm not wishing cancer upon me right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Cause, yeah, cause everyone's got a, that personal you know, personal reality. Mm, mm. And it's also like, you know, if, if you don't feel love for yourself, maybe you're going to do a lot of comfort eating and eat things that aren't good for you and forget to exercise and, and that's going to lead you down a bad, bad path. And then, and then surprise, surprise, you end up getting sick. And that's just a natural consequence of your actions. Yeah. So, okay, so we've got fre frequency. Normally when you say frequency, you mean emotional frequency. You also mean a physical or material frequency, a frequency of a reality. Yep. Uh, in, in which we can just, uh, at least hypothetically, we just shift to a different reality and have a different experience of life. And then, yeah, personal frequencies. Like personalities. Yeah. Mm, have you heard me use frequency in any, any other... <laughs> I know I do because it's uh, just I, a catch-all word. Just, just, just drop it in somewhere. <laughs> there is one other way I might talk about frequencies, and uh, that is like, and it only occurred to me after we went to an Acapulco, hmm. and we're talking about like uh, psychopaths. Yep. And we also mentioned, I don't know, we'd be like, we're joking about uh, about being an anarchist, whether whether they whether these people are born or where these people are created. So Aidan Gregg, one of the speakers, is, I think he is a professor at an Irish university. He brought up some interesting points about that, about how people are shaped from both nature versus nurture. Yeah, I think maybe we, some of this personality frequency might come in with, uh, well, you, might be, you might be born into that. And, and these sort of, uh, these sort of like, core personalities or principles that you might feel like are solid or are true to your personality, you might adopt and identify with, 
might not be something that, that you adopted through experience and might have come from some kind of past life or mm. some kind of principle that you seem to hang on to from your, from your soul or from, uh, you know, that you brought into this planet. And uh, the, the interesting example was like psychopaths, they, they have a different mind as well. So it's like, you know, you could be, maybe that's what makes us all a little bit alien, that, mm. that we are bringing in some kind of frequency range that can predict or manipulate, you know, the possibilities of our personality. Mm. Well, but, yeah, I've heard the claim that psychopaths can be detected in the womb and I've, I've heard other people claim that it's, it develops over time. So, cool. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think we'll we'll wrap it with that because right. um, I would like to explore that more and then maybe talk about it in a little more depth. Okay, let's talk about psychopaths another time. Cool. All right, my name's Kurt Robinson, and my name's Aaron Battle, and we have been the Paradise Paradox, or we still are, and maybe we will be next week. So press <laughs> like, press subscribe, uh, <laughs> press subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, Pocket Casts, and press get notifications on Facebook so you can see every cool piece of shit that we post and if you like the show go on donate.theparadiseparadox.com and give us a dollar for every show that you like uh, you can donate by Bitcoin or by your altcoins and have a good one show me a little love peace, peace. Right.